<clears throat> and then I would and you fill in the blanks about all the good that you would do is that million dollars because you want to do good for others or because you really want to change your status see that's what I'm talking about when I say that in presumption, in presumption usually the motives are twisted and let's, let me tell you how much God loves us remember in the Lord's Prayer <laughs> Jesus said this is what we ought to pray lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil what do you think that means sometimes our desires will lead us to be lost if God answered our prayer gave us what we asked for some of us would never be saved yeah We'd be lost. You know the you know the cliche, give them enough rope and they'll hang themselves. If we get all the things that we really wanted, and the reason is let me finish the thought. If we if we get everything that we really wanted, it would not be good for us. Don't we teach our children that? There are things that you could get that they ask for, but you say no. Why? because you want to teach them different lessons can't get everything you shouldn't have everything you need to be satisfied with what you got that's not good for you I won't get it all of that and God we're his children deals with us similarly in his wisdom because he's a God of love and he wants all of he wants to save all of us he's never going to give us something that would be injurious to us that's what it says in Luke chapter 11 your father in heaven he'll give you a better gift than your earthly father he won't give you something that's not for your good he's too wise to make a mistake too good to withhold anything that's good he'll give you that but we need to trust him and that trust means that we have faith so that when he ans when the answer does not come when we expect it want it and the answer is not what we want it to be or a combination of both we still trust God there's not a greater for me personally it's just me there's not a greater trust story than the story of Job when Job finally declares even if he kills me I trust him though he slay me yet will I trust him we have to have that kind of trust in our Heavenly Father. That's what faith is all about. Third reason, clinging to any known sins. Sound familiar? Sure it is. Way back, weeks ago, that was one of the recommendations for an effective prayer life, is that we needed to confess our sins. Matthew 5, 23 and 24. <clears throat> I'm getting it and I'll fetch it and post it for you. Then we'll read it and we'll all be able to appreciate it. 
therefore if you are presenting your offering at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you leave your offering there before the altar and go first to be reconciled to your brother and then come and present your offering this is speaking to sin remember that the commandments are summarized in two love God with all your heart and soul and strength is one and number two was what love your neighbor as yourself and sin is transgression of the law those commandments also known as the moral law and those are the last six that relate to our relationship with each other and so if we break one that's coveting lying stealing if we break one instead of making an offering to God which is what we're saying thank you to him for his goodness he said lead that offering right there don't even go and don't go through with it on the altar leave it there go to the person that you have an issue with and make it right what's that mean ask forgiveness all right <clears throat> not the easiest thing but what is required another text Matthew chapter 6 verses 14 and 15 Matthew 6 14 and 15 this is what we do with known saints this is what the Bible says to do Matthew 6 verses 14 and 15 verse 14 for if you forgive others for their transgressions your heavenly father will also forgive you but 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 if you do not forgive others then your father will not forgive your transgressions whoa whoa it seems to me that what that is saying is we're forgiven as we forgive whoa so see that previous text that we were talking about where you were supposed to leave your gift at the altar leave your offering at the altar go and make things right with the person that you had an issue with and then this is this backs it up because what it's saying is you when you confess your sins God's not even gonna forgive you because you wouldn't forgive your neighbor, your brother, your wife, your husband. And these hinder our prayer life, make our request ineffective. It's another way of looking at it. Number four, we need a spirit of love and forgiveness. That's exactly what we were talking about, right? So we won't go any further than that. If we expect our own prayers to be heard, we must be willing to forgive others. And that reveals a heart condition that God cannot bless if we don't. Sometimes when we pray and our heart is not right, God gives us a revelation, a revelation of who we are. It could be in this conversation that we're having, this lesson that we're studying, that something is said that pricks you, cuts you, makes you say, hmm, makes you reflective, makes you say, 
I got to pray for strength for forgiveness I got to call somebody but I want you to know this the prayer of a penitent contrite soul is always accepted in fact on Thursday <clears throat> I, I, I added this Thursday coming that would be the 7th right the next time we meet <clears throat> I'm going to do one on I think the title of it is um, the prayer that God always answer, answers and I'm jumping ahead of myself but remember that statement I just made and that was the prayer of the penitent contrite soul is always accepted number five perseverance is another condition of receiving you remember that from the old list of six to persevere see we must pray always if we're to grow in faith and experience remember at the outset I gave you a text and I'll repeat it how often are we to pray without ceasing where was that found first Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17 pray without ceasing pray continually that means alone at prayer meeting with your family pray while you're working while you're walking while you're driving pray pray God wants to hear from you you can't wear him out There's another scripture. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And I want to focus on fervent. Fervent means persevering, continually praying. It avails much. There's a there's a textual example that I want to give and I'm trying to remember I think it's also in Luke it's about the guy who gets a guest company came over unexpectedly he didn't have any food in the house so he goes to his friend next door lives next door to him you know his buddy it's late but he knocks on the door says hey I need to I need I need some bread so I can make us make something for my company just came by and the guy doesn't open the door he says listen man I'm already in bed my kids are in bed everybody's in bed man we not I'm not getting up to give you anything and Jesus pauses and then makes the commentary he says but if that guy is persistent his friend is gonna get up and give him everything that he wants talking about persistence in our prayer life God wants to hear from us we've already indicated that we have to have a need and nothing suggests need like being continual or continue us praying without ceasing perseverance Romans chapter 12 verse 12 here's another text about perseverance Romans 12 12 We're winding up this study about the privilege of prayer. Rejoicing in hope, persevering in tribulation, devoted in prayer. Talking about being persevering or being 
having sustaining our prayer life, not being afraid. Colossians 4 2 is another one. Devote yourselves to prayer, keeping alert in it with an attitude of thanksgiving. And there are others I'm not going to post. Uh, 1 Peter 4 7, um, Philippians 4 6. I'm going to do this one. Jude 20 and 21. Remember, Jude is only one chapter, so we just say Jude 20 and 21. It means verses 21, 20 and 21. This one I think is is I will post. I'm fetching it and here we go. We're talking about perseverance in your prayer life and that it's it is not only necessary, it's required for an effective prayer life. Verse twenty. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting anxiously for the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ to eternal life. Our perseverance in our prayer life is for the gift that we are promised. It should be for eternal life. The things that we ask for that are according to the will of God, because God wants to do what? He wants to save us are consistent with that. Now, don't be confused. God doesn't want you to live on the street. He doesn't want you to be hungry. He doesn't want you not to have any clothes. In fact, he's kind of specific about that in terms of the kinds of people who are going to be saved. They are those who clothed the naked, visited the sick, and those in prison, and so forth, fed the hungry, all of that. So he does want those things for you. So there are things that we see as temporal that God also wants for us and are part of, they are part of his saving us. Unceasing prayer is the unbroken union of the soul with God so that life from God flows into our life. And from our life, purity and holiness flow back to God. That's taken from a book called Steps to Christ. I said it before and I'll say it again. In this persevering in prayer, we should seek every opportunity for prayer. Whether it's prayer meeting, family worship, or just praying with the fam our family, but we must not neglect secret prayer. Mark 1, 35. Remember that at the outset? Rising up a great while before dawn, he went out, got out of the house, this was Jesus, and he departed into a solitary place, and there he prayed. He was alone. Not suggesting that you have to leave your house today. But I am suggesting, no, I am saying, you must find time to pray alone, you and God, without distraction. The TV's not on in the background. You don't hear music playing. It's quiet. And maybe that's why. Early in the morning was such a prime time for Jesus. Others were probably asleep. He got up went out, found a quiet spot, and talked to his father. We're to do the same. Number six, <clears throat> pray in the name of Jesus. Sounds familiar? Yeah. John 16, 26, and 27. <clears throat> I'm not going to post. Um, John, uh, I'm not John, Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 25. These are all examples of praying in the name of Jesus. And so 
Many of us pray, and when we pray, we say, these things we ask in the name of Jesus, because we're taught by Scripture to pray in the name of Jesus. We're talking to the Father, praying in the name of Jesus. Why? Why? Why do we do that? Because Hebrews tells us that Jesus is our high priest. Let me, well, let me post one. Hebrews 7.25, praying in the name of Jesus. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 25. Therefore, he is able also to save forever those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. The role of Jesus right now is making intercession for us with God. We can come, I think Paul talks about it this, this way in Hebrews, we can come before the throne of God with boldness. Why? Because we know that Jesus is making intercession for us. And so we pray in the name of Jesus. Anything that you ask in my name, my Father will give you. He told that to the disciples. Are you a disciple? Are you asking in Jesus' name? If you do, you'll be following his instructions. Last, number seven, we need to praise God more. Psalm 107 and verse 8 says, I'm fetching it. It's my last posting. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his loving kindness and for his wonders to the sons of men. That we must be careful to give all the glory and the praise and the honor to God for his goodness and for his willingness to talk with us. Don't just talk of our wants. To think about God's mercies and give thanks, express gratitude, praise him for what he's done. I want you to make time to enjoy the privilege of prayer. I want you to make it your supreme goal, and that is to have fellowship with your best friend, the living God. That's my appeal to you. That your prayer life will be your number one priority. And that means that you're making time for your best friend. Your best friend. <clears throat> Any thoughts? Any comments? Any questions? We'll be happy to entertain them. We have a couple of minutes. <clears throat> and this would be the time. Prayer is such a privilege. Uh, all heaven is amazed that we don't take advantage of it. It is a gift, this privilege that's been extended to us, bought with the blood of Jesus. If Jesus hadn't died on the cross, we could not approach the throne of the Father. See, prayer doesn't bring God down to us. It takes us up to him. And it wouldn't be possible if Jesus hadn't come, given his life, 
and was resurrected his resurrection was equally as important Hebrews tells us that he's he ever liveth to make intercession he's interceding for us the Holy Spirit even joins in that ministry of interceding for us on our behalf when our prayers the words are just not coming they're confused he who understands and knows our hearts hears our prayers so the excuse of I don't know how to pray, pray it's been blown up Holy Spirit's there to take care of that for you the only thing that prevents the prayer life is time and we have been given time not tomorrow but today I want you to pray with me for God's strength to be determined about our prayer life Father, we thank you for the things that you put in scripture for us to see, for us to read, and for us to understand. And we thank you so much for the Holy Spirit who brings a revelation, but not only revelation, is willing to, to, to intercede or to translate, to put words together that are the expression of of our very hearts, our very soul. Father, we thank you so much for all your goodness and your kindness to us and for your willingness to hear us when we call. Put in us tonight a desire, no, a compunction to pray so that we will be able to stand and withstand the trials of life and count them as joy knowing that our prayers will be according to your will and you'll be able to bless us and use us in Jesus name I pray Amen Good night I look forward to seeing you on Thursday on Thursday as I said we're going to examine the prayer that God always answers. I think you'll enjoy it. God bless you. Good night.